Offshore drilling is the discovery and development of underwater oil and gas resources. The term is used to describe oil extraction off the coasts. It is a very controversial topic in politics. The American people depend on oil on a day-to-day -day basis. Thus, many believe that this process is necessary. However, it presents many environmental challenges that could kill various species from oil spills, such as Exxon Valdez, Ixtac-1, and currently Deepwater Horizon. Oil rigs are permanent platforms that work around the clock to drill and pump huge amounts of oil, especially from the Gulf Coast in the U.S. The pros of offshore drilling include greater domestic oil production, less reliance on imported oil from the Middle East, an increase in the supply of oil, lower gasoline prices, and an increase in government revenues through royalties. However, there's also a growing movement to reduce drilling. Opponents say that the additional oil generated through expanded offshore drilling will not be enough to greatly affect world oil prices. The nature of the operation Extraction of volatile substances, oil and natural gas, under extreme pressure in a hostile environment, means risk, accidents, and tragedies. High falls, explosions, spinning machinery, extreme temperatures, and exposure to chemicals are a few of the many dangers to work. Increased drilling also means a decreased demand for alternate fuel sources, which means our global carbon emissions will remain at the same high level for much longer. Oil spills negatively impact surrounding areas for generations. For example, about 100 tons of oil can still be found on the beaches of Prince William Sound, more than 20 years after the Exxon Valdez disaster. On April 20, 2010, an explosion rocked the Deepwater Horizon platform offshore of New Orleans, igniting a massive fire. This killed 11 workers and injured many more. Two days later, a second explosion caused the oil rig to sink into the Gulf of Mexico, taking with it a riser pipe which remained attached to the malfunctioning blow-up renter, which was supposed to cut the oil supply in events like these. The riser pipe, which normally goes from the wellhead to the drilling ship, broke as the rig sank. The resulting spill has turned out to be the worst oil disaster in U.S. history, eclipsing the Exxon Valdez spill. As many as 19,000 barrels of crude oil is gushing from the pipes into the Gulf of Mexico each day, an estimated 210,000 gallons. Containment domes were placed over the leak to stop oil from spilling out of the well, but failed because gas and seawater formed ice-like crystals of methane hydrate. This caused the domes to float uselessly above the leak, and the crystals blocked the opening where the oil should have been collected. Special types of emulsifiers, called dispersants, are able to nudge water and oil molecules apart to reduce surface tension. These smaller oil particles are more readily ingested and degraded by microbes. BP has used nearly 1 million gallons of the dispersant core exit, which could reduce oxygen levels and thus kill microbes. The dispersed oil also falls beneath the surface to create huge toxic plumes. However, experts say that the positive effects of the dispersants outweigh the negative, considering what damage undispersed crude oil can do. Oil spreads relatively quickly with the currents and winds. It then combines with water to form an oil slick that clings to everything it comes in contact with. The one in the Gulf of Mexico currently has a radius of about 200 miles. When animals come in contact, it causes hypothermia by destroying insulating fur, hurts the ability to fly, can poison if ingested, damages organ systems, taints algae, causes thinner eggshells, which leads to more deformities, and damage breeding, feeding, or shelter areas. Turtles, birds, and other animals are coated with oil and are breathing in oil. Dolphins and sea turtles have been washing up on shore dead. Workers in the cleanup efforts have also been getting sick from fumes. Bayous and beaches of Louisiana are home to coastal wetlands. They are very vulnerable to the oil spill, especially during breeding season for fish, shrimp, oysters, and shorebirds. The young animals are very sensitive to toxic oil, and their parents still get food from oily waters. Oil seeds deep into marshes and can hold onto oil for years. 
The sticky oil coats blades of grass to help degrade the marshes even faster, which can make the Louisiana shoreline erode away into nothing. If the oil slick reaches certain currents, it could reach Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, including the Keys and Everglades, and the beaches of the East Coast. Tar balls are even being found on the pristine white beaches of Florida. Businesses, jobs, and homes are being lost. Seafood prices have increased due to the damage caused by the spill. Tourism, restaurant, fishing, shrimp, and other seafood industries are heavily affected and are in deep depression. Fishermen cannot fish during catching season because of the spill, as Washington has also banned fishing in more than 37% of federally owned water in the Gulf to protect the American people. People all around the world are upset with BP for all their failed ventures to stop the oil from spilling. They are demanding more action and responsibility of the company. However, no matter how much we blame BP, they cannot handle this mess by themselves. The Gulf Coast and its wetlands and threatened species need our help. So, text WILDLIFE to 20222 to donate $10 to support Gulf Wildlife.